So this is, for example, genomic data. We have three coordinates. We have three features, right? So I know like this is quite simple because we chose three features, but still, if you look at this three-dimensional space, you cannot tease them apart. They look, you know, like you can rotate things, you know, but still it's not very visible that actually you can find different clusters or groups of samples, right, uh, of these features. So if you do PCA and project the data onto PC1 and PC2, you will see that using these new features, now you're not doing gene 1 and gene 2 or gene 3, right? These are new features based on PC1 and PC2. You can easily see nice uh, distribution, you know, like clusters of that the, the data nicely clusters into different groups, okay? So this is one way of what we say the, like, um, it's to visualize data, high dimensional data, okay? Belonging to RD. So if you go from a D dimensional space to a K dimensional space with K equals to two, and your D in the beginning was equal to, I don't know, a thousand features, now by finding the best, extracting the best features that with, um, you know, which capture the highest variance of the data, you know that these two features are very important because, because basically they capture everything you want to know about these 1,000 features. So you're reducing a 1,000 feature that might not tell you many things about the data and they're hard to display, visualize into this high dimensional space into, you know, a very simply, um, uh, uh, how do I say, it? like into a low dimensional space, R2, where you can easily look at the data, see the data using a very good representation um, of the data, okay? So these two axes. So this is one way. Also, you can, um, for it got not working. Okay, come on. Mm -hmm. Okay, so also we, what we can do, we can, um, if we have a high dimensional data and we know that uh, somehow by just, you know, plotting this data, okay, onto PC, using PCA, so this is for example PC1 and PC2, okay, we can see that this data actually uh, nicely, uh, um, but, you know, like different samples belong to different clusters and here we use the labels to double check that the PCA has captured the most important information about the data because using these two features, we were able to see, clearly see, that these samples, they belong to different groups, okay? These two features tells us a lot about the data. If we were to analyze the 1,000 features, we couldn't plot them or see them, okay? So this is one potential thing. And PCA generally is, we're going to see uh, next week, so it's commonly used, um, as a pre-step for different clustering algorithms because we, uh, if you have a high dimensional data and you want to cluster, use unsupervised clustering, so difficult. So what you can do is first reduce the data, okay, using PTA and then do the clustering, okay? Can I yes, yes, please. Is there an over limit to reduce the dimension? An over, no, you can, okay, so the minimum, that's a good question. So. The minimum value for the eigenvectors, so it's, it goes from 1 to D, okay? So one component to D component maximum. D components, it means you did not reduce. Okay, it's so full, it's just transforming, full mapping. So if I have a data which has uh, five dimensions, for example, then I can reduce the dimension to onto one. Onto, uh, yeah, down to one, yes, yes. So now the second thing is classification, right? So this is an interesting paper. Uh, right, so published in 2016, where they train different classifiers, okay, uh, naive base, we saw that, we saw SVM, hmm? and then there's also ensemble methods, including bagging, random force, and adaboost, uh, and what they compare, they compare the classification performance, the accuracy, before and after PCA, okay, so here, what do you guys know this? that using PCA, after PCA, they got a good boost in uh, the classification performance, right? So you have an increase in the classification depending on the method, but this is quite impressive because consistently, whatever method you're using, it always, you know, whether you're using an ensemble learner or, you know, this, or like an individual learner, it 
con con consistently boosted the accuracy, classification accuracy. Okay? So uh, this is just one application. Now, what we're going to look at is protocol. So, guys, I would like you to take a two minute in the same piece of paper and tell me about how are we going, how can we possibly use PCA with SVM. Okay? So, within K fold cross validation. One thing to keep in mind is PCA is unsupervised, right? So I'm going to put something very important because I know maybe you saw this the first time. So I'm going to put this, where is the, uh, with the K, one second. Right, this is the right one. So tell me about training and... <clears throat> Training and testing. Define your variables, define your functions, and tell me, guys, how this works. So it's similar to feature selection, right? But I want to see maths. Now you can just do maths to do this, like you have the formula, right? So you can do it for training and testing. I'll give you one minute to think about it, but all you need to think about is like training and testing SVM, that's pretty obvious, it's using the reduced data, right? Now the key thing is how to reduce the dimensionality of the training samples and the testing samples, very similar to feature selection, but slightly different. Okay, so guys, what is the first step? Map original data. 
to PCA space using K principal components. Okay? Right. Okay, so how to do that? We need to um, take basically the um, X train. So before that, there is, well, let's start from the beginning. This is not really the beginning of the story. There, were, there are things missing. What is the beginning of the story? Before we map, we need to get something. We need to get the U, right? The U, the eigenvectors. So to do that, so first we need to, let me just put this down. So what is the first thing we need to do, guys? Compute covariance matrix. So there is something called here, let's call it the um, covariance matrix of training belonging to R D times D. Okay, so compute the covariance matrix of the training samples. Yes? Do we really, really need the k fold approach in PCA? That's a very good question. We want to train a classifier. And we're going to use a dimensionality reduction algorithm to, uh, you know, give the classifier a low number of features to train on and test, right? So in this case, that's the wrong protocol. You are thinking about the wrong protocol, maybe. So the wrong protocol is, I uh, should, what is the wrong protocol? Let me just, sorry? The peaking phenomenon, yes, very good. So the wrong protocol would be, okay, men, think about it, using all tests, all data, okay, performing PCA, this belongs to our N plus M training and testing, training and testing times D. You get a new transform data that belongs to R, okay, then uh, it's the dimensionality is N plus M samples times K, Right. You do this, and then... Actually, I was not talking about tests. Do we really need the uh, K-fold train? You can just leave one out. You can use... So it's cross-validation. You need to train a classifier, right? SVM, for example. How do you train an SVM? Okay, look. What I'm ex explaining is this, okay? So let me... There is something confusing, but we'll get it clear. So look, all of those classifiers, they were trained using cross-validation, right? Generally, cross-validation is the best way. Remember, we can divide the, you know, the data into fixed train set and a fixed test set. That is possible, right? But it's the same thing. At the end, you know, you're going to separate these two. So whatever you're going to do is like uh, with cross-validation, you're just changing the test set and the train set. But if you do it once correctly for a fixed, two fixed ones, then you can do it easily when you're changing them. You got the idea, right? Okay, so now let's, let's just describe the wrong protocol so you guys get it right, okay? So the wrong protocol is basically to take all the data, perform PCA on the data, reduce all samples together. This is problematic because here you peaked on the data, so there is the peaking uh, phenomenon because to do PCA, to reduce the data, okay, you, were, you looked at all of the relationships, all those local neighborhoods. Some testing samples can be neighbors to others, so, so you looked at the variance of the training and the testing at the same time to find the axis. You're not allowed to do that because, here, look, this might be your training samples, right? But if I do change a little bit the data, so I do maybe put, I don't know, something like this. These are my, my testing samples. Everything will, many things will change, right? So you're not allowed to perform PCA by looking at both of them. So here, the route protocol is to first reduce, and once you have your new matrix, the T, okay, so you're going to put a, do leave one out or k fold on this t matrix. So this is your new data and you'll consider it as, you know, nice and good and you're good to do SVM. This is wrong. You cannot do that and you're going to have a high accuracy because you have cheated. Okay? So the right way of doing it, let's go back. It's within a leave one out. You're going to perform PCA k times. It's like feature selection. So first thing is get the covariance matrix. After you get the covariance matrix, what are we getting? We're going to do SVD, uh, singular value decomposition. After the singular value decomposition, uh, we're getting the U vector, the eigenvectors, and the eigenvalues. So we are getting the U 
Okay, so this U, first it belongs to what, if you guys remember? So the U, the normal U, belongs to R, D times D. Okay, this is without any truncation. Then what we need to do, we sort them out. So sorting according to uh, the larger values of the eigen, um, the largest values that eigenvalues take. Then we need to define a new U. Let's call it the UK, okay, where we pick only the top K eigen vectors. So what we have, we have a UK belonging to R, D times K. These are the K components or the K, you know, like, you know, in the new space, basically, okay? So after that, what we need to do, we defined our UK, our mapping basis. So the second step would be to map the original data to PCA space using, you know, basically UK, right? So here, how to do that? We take the X train, multiply it. So this is multiplied by the um, UK, okay, the basis, the eigenvectors. And then what do we get? We will get the T transform data, okay, T, uh, TR PCA this one, of dimensionality n times k, right? So we've done that for the training data. So then to train a classifier, so we need to give it what? T, T, R, P, C, A, the reduced data, plus we need to give it the Y train, the labels, and then we learn the model. So here we give it the model, but the test set. So now this is the important step. So you need before you train the classifier, especially the last step, right? So you need to also map the original testing data, right? So we need to also map the testing samples. How to do that is so simple, right? So how to do that, guys? So this is my matrix X uh, test. Its dimension is m times d, and to map it into the new space, to transform it, I need to simply do what? Multiply it by uk. So this, the dimensionality of the k, remember, it's d times k. The first one is xts is m times d, then this will disappear. We're going to get a matrix, transform matrix of dimensionality m times k. These are the number of testing samples, and these are the reduced features, okay? So then we will get this. So we will get the t test PCA. So t test PCA belongs to what? R m times k, and this is what we should give to the classifier. You guys got that? Okay, great. Uh, so now one final thing. So the last 10 minutes, I'm going to, uh, do you have any questions before we go? Is it clear? So you can see how we started from the beginning, the covariance till, you know, like the SVD, but still, did we do any maths? Why we got, why we needed to do SVD? Why we needed to sort them by increasing uh, values of eigen, uh, you know, by, you know, by highest uh, values of the eigen, uh, sorry, sort the vectors, the eigen vectors, by the increasing uh, values of their corresponding eigen values. Why we needed to do that? You guys have no clue. Do you have a clue? Why we needed to sort them? I did not explain. So when I explained the pipeline here, I said, okay, here is. It's all in the covariance, so we started from the covariance. Then somehow we needed to find those vectors because those vectors they capture the highest variability. But you don't know why we need why we found why the solution to this problem is eigenvector, and you don't know why the solution is taking the highest eigenvalue. That choosing selecting the eigenvector as a princi first principal component, uh, given that it has the highest eigenvalue. You don't know why we did that. Now we can know. So maths. 